I didn't expect to get 600 votes and end up with a landslide at the same time. So, here it is. Hey guys, what's up? Are you? Of course, we're bound to go over this topic at some point in time, right? Now that we've saved Sumeru and fixed everything wrong with the Academia, we can finally sit down and rest our tear guts and play card games in Sumeru for about 5 more patches until we move on to the next region. Unfortunately, the information we got about Fontaine as well as its quirky Archon is as helpful as your boy Pallet. So welcome to another rambling of a guy that talks about weird things. You need to stop everything. This needs to stop. In this video, we're gonna go over Fosalor and his demonic origins, the system of government that Fontaine has, Fosalor's unique personality and what it could entail for the story, and finally, what Fontaine's justice system could mean for Fosalor and Fontaine's people. As always, timestamps will be in the description and the comments. So with that said, let's get things started. Fosalor, or Fokalor, as many of you may already know, is a name that's taken from the grimoire of demonology, the Lesser Key of Solomon. Fosalor specifically came from the book Ars Goetia. And based on my great knowledge of demon and act of Goetia, as well as what these demons do, Fosalor is a duke of hell, listed as the 41st out of the 72 demons. 69 if you prefer the pseudo monarchia demonium. Fosalor is depicted as a man with griffin wings. And from what I could tell, Fosalor likes to kill men. Specifically, well, he drowns them. With his power of the wind and seas, he can create storms and destroy ships of war. This is the main description of Fosalor or Fokalor and is more or less what you would end up seeing if you start looking around. But Fosalor has two interesting points that I think could fit into Genshin's story. Even though Fosalor is a murderous spirit that drowns men or people, Fosalor can be controlled by the one who summoned him. Because from what I could understand, the act of Goetia is the art of summoning demons to do your bidding. So the exorcist or the conjurer who summons Fosalor can command him to not kill. In response, Fosalor will follow this command and willingly at that. So even though Fosalor is a demon that murders as much as he wants, he is still controllable by a human. But this only applies to harming. Men. Everything else, I assume, is up to interpretation and a bit of debate between the demon and the conjurer. Next is Fosalor's little gimmick with trying to bide his time for 1000 years and go back to what is called the Seventh Throne. But sadly, he never did go back. The Seventh Throne, which I think is the throne of God on the Seventh Heaven, is a place or abode where God is. Basically, the kingdom of God. But in the Seventh Heaven is also where we can find Seraphim, Ophanim and the Hayat. This is what all three of them look like, and this is what all of them do. Keep in mind, this isn't what they only do, since reading the Bible depicts them in quite a few ways as well as doing different things. But they all have one common duty, and that's to be a guardian in the throne of God, as well as aiding humans in spiritual evolution. Now, in some interpretations, not all of them. There is one where Lucifer, yes, this Lucifer, was described as a cherub, singular form of the cherubim, before he fell, which conflicts his other depictions being an archangel. But I won't go into detail there. What we can, however, take into account is that Fosalor was from the seventh heaven and is looking for a way back. In Genshin's context, Fosalor could have fallen from Celestia and is trying to work her way up again. I'll go back to how she might be working her way to Celestia later because we have one final detail about Fosalor. This is kind of an opinion-based segment, depending on if you think Lucifuge Rofocal is an anagram of Fosalor. Lucifuge Rofocal is the Prime Minister of Hell instead of a Duke, and is one of Lucifer's most faithful supporters. Now isn't this interesting? Lucifer, Lucifuge Rofocal, and Fosalor going around full circle. Lucifuge has power over all worldly treasures as well as control of Hell's treasures. He is very loyal to his master to the point that he is willing to kill other demons for Lucifer's sake. Lucifuge's power isn't stated but it's kind of clear that he has power over worldly treasures. His pact, if summoned, consists of having to give a small portion of treasure to Lucifuge every time, as well as showing charity and keeping the pact a secret. If any of these three are not followed at some point, he can basically take and keep the conjurer's soul. 
Now, there isn't much to relate to Fosalore, and even less to put into Genshin's possible story, but having three demon names in one location, or three characters stemming from a single Archon, is kind of hype because we could get three Hydro Archons once we get to Fontaine. I mean, technically we already do, but this idea, however, could become a stretch that makes more plot holes instead of covering them. One possible cover for having three Hydro Archons is the gimmick of creating puppets. Remember, A might not be the only Archon who created more than one puppet, and in the most advanced civilization on Teyvat, puppets might not even be a secret anymore. So now that we're done with Fosalore the Demon, let's go over Fosalore from Fontaine. At the end of 3.2's Archon Quest, Nahida mentions that Fontaine has what's called a judicial system, and that there's a proper chief justice within Fontaine. Now, from my limited knowledge on law and systems of government, i.e. looking around Wikipedia and some random websites, a judicial system is a system of courts that interprets defends, and applies laws, and are what represent the law and order of a given state, in our case, Fontaine. So basically, this system of courts is the main group that decides who's guilty and who's innocent. But Fontaine's judicial system isn't led by the god of justice. Fontaine's system of government has a separate chief justice, of which is the most powerful and the leader of a country's highest court, thereby the entire judiciary of Fontaine. So a non-Archon leading influencer who is responsible for the norms and standards that guide how judges operate, and for the regulation of the administration of courts. To sum it up, Fontaine's laws and system of government isn't led by their Archon, rather by the judiciary of Fontaine itself. However, the final verdict of each and every individual trial is still influenced by Fosalor. As the god of justice, it's only right that she has as much influence as the chief justice. This is the distinction that I see from the god of justice and the system of government that Fontaine has. Unlike Inazuma or Sumeru, where the entire region is more or less led by their Archon, Fontaine is led by a non-Archon government. But this isn't really new since we have Mondstadt and Liwe run by the people and not the Archon. All three regions, Liwe, Mondstadt, and Fontaine, run on similar but still distinct forms of government, with the only similarities being that the region is led by non-Archons. Everything else from there changes drastically. I won't go into detail regarding what specific government each region has since this video isn't about that. But the reason I decided to make this segment is that Fontaine's situation has a very interesting dynamic, and that it's neither on the side of Inazuma or Sumeru, where it's almost directly led by the Archon, nor is it on the side of Liwe and Mondstadt, where the Archon only glances by, or that humans are what govern themselves. Fontaine is sitting somewhere in the middle, where both humans and the Archon take charge of the region, which is an entirely new way that a region runs. Think of a human having nearly the same influence as an Archon in every trial. And to top it off, the verdict of each trial isn't decided by the God of Justice either. This might make you wonder whether or not both sides are entirely equal, or if one is underhanding the other. Humanity controlling the Archon, or the Archon controlling humanity. Now, regarding Fosalor's unique personality, I can only make a toss-up that Fosalor just loves participating in court hearings or that there's something wrong with Fosalor. If I'm being biased, her unique personality is linked to a double personality, one that so far had few prevalent examples. Whether or not this unique personality is something similar to Inazuma and Sumeru, where we end up having two Fosalors, or maybe Fosalor is just immersing herself in the courtroom. Having two or maybe three Fosalors attending multiple multiple different trials at the same time would sound fun though, since we now need to find out which Fosalor is the real one and figure out how we're going to deal with more than one Archon at the same time. The multiple personality or clones of oneself is also not a new thing. We already have Nahida, A, and Dottori, and it could be possible that Fosalor also holds knowledge of creating puppets similar to A, resulting in multiple puppets that Fosalor created to attend every trial in Fontaine. If we use the Conjurer's Dilemma, to connect with Fosalor's unique personality, then maybe Kusanali meant that her personality changes the moment she enters every trial. Being a benevolent Hydro Archon outside of the courtroom, and then becoming an Iron Fist God of Justice inside the courtroom, whereby she gets controlled by the Chief Justice of Fontaine and makes her agree with the laws created by the judiciary and turn a blind eye to any proper and real justice. 
This is the only explanation that I have regarding why she has her weird personality that excludes the whole previous Archon gimmick, as well as why she would want to be in every trial. One or the other, Fosanor's constant involvement in the court trials is going to be a key point in finding out what's wrong with Fontaine. This sort of plot also fits the whole Masquerade of the Guilty in the Travail teaser, and focuses more on what humanity wants than what the Archon wants, making the skewed ideals of humans the bigger focus. Similar to how Ekonomia's usage of children as god figures to mask their twisted motivations. Outside of one controlling the other, there could simply be a personal reason for why Fosalor wants to be included in every trial as well. Remember what we went over about Fosalor wanting to return to heaven after a thousand years but actually didn't? Well, maybe Fosalor wasn't supposed to go down from Celestia when the Hydro Archon died. Maybe she was forced to go down to Teyvat to fulfill some sort of mission, or that she was sent down to Teyvat as a punishment. And what she needs to do to ascend back up to Celestia is to partake in these trials. We know from Venti that Celestia isn't really the welcoming type, or is the most relaxing place to be in either. So maybe this political party and masquerade of the guilty that Fontaine is known for is just a small form of the hellish god politics that Celestia has going on up there. It would also be an ironic and painful twist for the god of justice to be guilty and make up for it by judging other guilty people. This would also fit why she is cautious of Celestia but still judges other gods, opening up a sort of hatred between Archons that we haven't seen yet. Again, as someone who is not versed in such topics, I can only provide context based on what limited information I know. And from what I can understand, the final verdict for each trial is still decided by the Chief Justice or at least a group of people in Fontaine. And Fosalor, even as the God of Justice, only holds heavy influence but is not the head of each individual trial. Which means that Fosalor isn't the one hitting the gavel and deciding whether or not someone is innocent or guilty. This leaves Fontaine's rule on laws still led by the judiciary and that the God of Justice merely influences the scales. But in my own opinion, the judicial system of Fontaine is already in the God of Justice's pockets. This would explain why she would act as though her ideals have no stains, whatever her ideals may be. As well as saying that she is pure and magnificent. In a sense, she makes it apparent that she is untouchable even though the Chief Justice or Judiciary is the real law and not the God of Justice. So if the ideals that she speaks of have no stains, then these ideals are the same ones that the Chief Justice or everyone in Fontaine has to uphold. Thereby, the ideals of the God of Justice are the same ideals that Fontaine's law also has. Which makes the discrepancies between Fosalor, Rofokel, and Lucifer also possible. Which might create a new twist that the Chief Justice is basically the God of Justice but a different person. A region seemingly run by humanity but is secretly controlled by the Archon. However, this same idea can be reversed in that the God of Justice is the one in Fontaine's pocket, since we have the problem with Fosalor and the Conjurer, meaning we'd have a similar story as Inazuma and Sumeru. But this time, humanity is utilizing the God of Justice to match their skewed views and control Fontaine with a leash. This would fit because of Fosalor's ties with the Conjurer and how the Conjurer can command Fosalor. Now, you might ask how is this plot different from Sumeru's dilemma with Nahida? Controlling an Archon's power and influence and putting them in a box for 500 years are two different things. Sumeru's story had the Academia wanting a new god and was blind to Kusanali but still utilized her in some capacity. They also still believed in Rukadevata, rather they believed in knowledge. The Academia also didn't do all this for their selfish desires. They still did what they did in the name of representing wisdom. In Fontaine, however, the Chief Justice could be aware of Fosalor's power and willingly abuse it to mold Fontaine into whatever they please, controlling her in both the courtroom as well as her influence in all of Fontaine. Remember Enkanamiya and the Sun Children? Yeah, something like that might be happening in Fontaine depending on how Hoyo wants to play it. All these theories and speculations are of course still debatable and one or the other, or maybe none of these, would be what Hoyo has in plan for 4.0. But for the sake of letting minds wonder what might happen, as well as wanting to babble on about what I think will happen, these are the theories that I put down and all we can do now is wait for more information. 
And there you have it, what I think about the whole Fosalor mystery and what I think is up with Fosalor and Fontaine. Comment below if you have similar ideas or if you have different ideas entirely. Now as I'm editing this video, I really didn't think that we'd get over 600 votes on the recent poll that I made. Seriously, I really thought I'd get maybe 100 or so. But as it shows, you guys really did spare a brain cell <laughs> and showed me that whatever I was pondering over isn't a point of debate at all. I mean, 78% of all the votes are on Fosalor, like what? I guess it's safe to say that you guys do check community posts every now and then. So that means that I get to make more posts for you guys to see every day. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and if you want to see more of my content, do subscribe and click on that bell to stay updated whenever I have a new video or Stream. If you want to support your boy even more, then go give my Twitter a follow. I still don't know how to get that show on the road. But with that said, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe for more of my ramblings, and stay mad theorists. Bye!